All right, so today I am going to be going over some of the trainings I did yesterday in Tahoe to prepare for NAOC, which is officially starting in two weeks from now. So I got out to the Tahoe area just yesterday to do a few trainings. I was hoping to do a bit more than I got out for, but because of uh, injury problems, which I've already discussed, I only got out to do two trainings and just cut the weekend short. Uh, it was nice to get out and do some morning touring, although I really need to focus on just getting healthy again for the actual championship. And that's going to be my focus for now. But until then, let's uh, go over some of the maps or the map that I ran on uh, yesterday and take a look at how I did on the course. Here's the first training that I did yesterday. This was an afternoon training. I believe the map is Donner, uh, Donner Pass or, or Donner Summit. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's uh, somewhat relevant to some of the other terrain, such as the Truckee Summit and parts of Sagehin, which are the two maps for the actual championships but just in general it's a it's a nice technical area to get some good orienteering practice and sort of remember what i'm doing because it's been a while so let's see i wish i could zoom in a bit more let me check if that's possible okay yeah that's that's a little better all right so i made this course for myself a bit of like a control pick with a lot of short legs a lot of fast turning to sort of get back into the practice of how to navigate, how to flow through controls and do it with confidence. So this first training didn't go so well. I definitely felt quite rusty, uh, didn't feel super confident uh, and took a lot of time between legs to sort of reset and reset my compass. I'd stop a lot at the checkpoints once I reached them instead of just flowing to the next control. But we can go ahead and go leg by leg and see sort of what I did. So first control, pretty straightforward out of the parking lot. The water features were quite overflowed and there was a lot of snow on the ground, which made it not very runnable. Uh, and also, like I already mentioned, the water features were much, much more wet than usual because of all the melting snow. It took a little while to cross over this creek. I remember checking off this sort of hilltops and then this yellow area top on the top of the spur was pretty distinct so didn't have to look at the map until i got to that yellow area on the spur and just kept going on a rough compass until i hit the rock that number one was on uh pretty pretty straightforward control uh felt pretty good about that one considering it was the first control orienteering control i've done in a quite a while it's been a few months it was a good execution and moving on to checkpoint number two felt pretty decent about this one i think i might have stopped a little bit to really get my compass set to start going to checkpoint two from checkpoint one and it paid off pretty sticking pretty well on my line yeah i remember i was looking for this little spur feature with the bare rock on it and uh yeah, I held my compass, was looking out for that, and when I saw it, I knew exactly where I was going. No issues there. So, looks like on the GPS, I may have been on the rocks right below it, which is a bit of a mistake, but the rocks are kind of hard to see under all the snow. Ideally, I would have went straight to the top rock, but I think I went right below it. Anyways, on to checkpoint number three, where I made a small mistake. Um, I stayed pretty good on my line. Again, took a rough compass out of checkpoint number two came around this hill and I think I didn't really check my map carefully for where the checkpoint was in relation to this hilltop. I think if I did that I would have been more accurate coming around the hill but I sort of just said to myself all right I'll go around this hill and then go into the re-entrant and I'll see a rock which in practice it wasn't that straightforward. I ended up going around the hill uh, sticking too high into the re-entrant and it took a little while to relocate actually I was, I was sort of just looking around but then I realized I should really use the features around me so I, I took a look at where I was in comparison to the hilltop saw that I was directly south of it and I wanted to be a little bit south uh, southwest so 
I knew that I was too high, uh, which is good. It's a good that I was able to relocate like that, but ideally I should have checked in where I was in relation to the hilltop right away so I didn't end up too high in the first place. But hit number three just fine. And number four, uh, no real issues, just went right by that hilltop, staying sort of perfectly on that purple line. After passing this hilltop, I just took a rough bearing uh, in the direction of the checkpoint four and was looking for the rock and hit it just fine. So that was good. Five was probably my biggest uh, mistake, I'd say, on this course, as is mostly just a hesitation. I started out okay. Uh, there was a, quite a bit of green in this area that I was trying to avoid. So uh, out of number four, I didn't quite go straight out towards number five. I sort of weaved backwards a bit. And after weaving backwards, I stuck pretty st straight on my compass, although I should have taken into consideration the fact that I sort of weaved back towards number three. So maybe I should have adjusted uh, uphill a bit and I didn't quite do that. I ended up slowing down uh, around the point where I would have expected to see the rocks uh, from number five. Uh, as you can see by the red on the track here, I was sort of just walking and looking around being like, where are the rocks? I don't know, I think I'm about the right distance. Because I, I didn't remember that I weaved back towards number three, I didn't know whether I was too high or too low, so I sort of was moving around. And I think what I should have done more carefully was I saw this spur and bare rock behind number five, uh, which is how I ended up relocating and realizing I'm probably too low. And I should have probably just, just realized that I should just run almost to that bare rock and use that as a feature to guide myself into the rocks by number five. But these these rocks were small, they were hard to see, it's snowy, and I'm not too upset about messing that up. Although that is like a classic mistake that I tend to make, and I think a lot of people tend to make, where they, they're overconfident in terms of their direction and distance estimation, and Really, I should have just been using the features near the checkpoint. Um, so that's sort of my takeaway from that checkpoint. Now, moving on, uh, I felt pretty good about six. Um, I didn't think it was that tricky, although I think I missed it at the end a little bit. The stony ground and the rock pile don't look that different in, in practice. So either way, uh, took a compass out from number five. Uh, it was a little bit off, but I had a lot of features to use that I could correct from. Went down that re-entrant and then uh, I really, I think I did well simplifying this leg. I saw the nose of this spur here and really only had to look at the map like one or two times uh, on this whole leg. Just seeing that uh, number six was off the nose of this long spur of bare rock. I sort of just navigated relative to that spur and came down to the side and went past it to the rocks uh, right off that nose. So that wasn't too bad. Seven, uh, seven, I may have missed a little bit as well, but I sort of just uh, took a rough compass in that direction and went to the rocks, which may have been the wrong rocks, but it's honestly hard to tell. There's so many rocks out there. Anyways, moving on to checkpoint number eight. Similar strategy to before, just take a compass uh, from number seven. I was crossing the same spur that I've been on before, so I was pretty comfortable uh, crossing that, knowing exactly where I was. And then from there, it was, it was really easy. You just cross this stream, and this spur with all the bare rock is quite visible. So just crossed onto this bare rock and came up and saw this first rock, and then just went over to that second rock there. Number nine, similarly pretty straightforward. I was just crossing this uh, very deep, very wet stream uh, and then following it up uh, a little bit, a little ways till I saw this rock right below uh, this hilltop with, with all the rocks on it. So had no issues there. 10, 10 was good. Uh, once again, took a bearing. I guess I was a little bit off, but I wasn't too worried because I was sort of just getting caught by this stream. Uh, or I knew I'd be caught by the stream and I'd just follow that up until I hit the rock. 11. 11 was fun. Uh, just used this hilltop here in order to direct my bearing. Uh, didn't really have to check the compass too carefully because I knew I was just going to hug the edge of this hill. So came up, hugged the edge, and then once I reached uh, sort of the end of this hilltop, 
I now took a rough bearing directly towards uh, checkpoint 11. So started running on my bearing. The bearing was pretty good. Uh, saw this uh, little tiny hilltop uh, to the northwest of number 11. Used that uh, as a sort of check, uh, thing to sight in the distance as I made my way in and hit the rock pile just fine. Number 12, once again, just used a rough compass out of number 11, across the stream, and as a feature, I used this little spur, it's kind of hard to see on the map, just northwest of checkpoint 12 in the circle. Used that as the main feature guiding me in uh, to number 12. Number 13 was a bit tricky, but not too bad. Uh, once again, just took a pretty rough compass, but mostly just use the contours to contour across. And uh, this, once again, this yellow spur here is was very quite visible uh, in the terrain. So I use that as a feature to check off on my way to number 13. And I thought I was closer to the line here, but uh, it turns out that I was a little bit high and I corrected very quickly once I realized that I wasn't seeing this bare rock spur that I expected on the line. So once I sort of reached the distance at which I expected to be there, uh, I knew I should have been seeing that on my right. So I was like, okay, I'm probably too far to the left. So let me turn right and go towards that spur and lost a little bit of time make going that extra distance. Definitely. That was a bit sloppy, but like I said, Sloppiness was sort of the name of the game um, <laughs> during this training, so it's uh, not unexpected. But moving on to number 14. This one wasn't that tricky. I again, took a, a pretty rough compass out of the control. Looks like that went pretty well, and then I just sort of climbed up the hill and was sort of using, I believe, I was using this reentrant parallel to the line as a guide to lead me into number 14. Next, checkpoint 15, pretty straightforward, just mostly contouring, but dropping a little bit. Uh, I didn't, I used my compass a bit, but mostly just said, follow the contour, maybe try to drop one contour or so uh, to get to number 15. Checkpoint 16, again, similar leg here, uh, just mostly contouring and this spur with all the rocks on it, it was quite visible, so I just had to make my way around that spur and into the reentrant behind it. And unfortunately, this was around like the 30 minute mark, which is when my IT band started acting up and was bothering me. So I was like, screw it, let me just walk down this hill, take a little break. Hopefully my IT band feels not so bad after walking down. So that's why this is all red here. Red means slow. Uh, so I was basically just a walk down to number 17. Uh, I mean, navigationally, it wasn't too tricky. You have these cliffs here sort of as a feature guiding you and you just go around. And then this hilltop in the circle was very useful, uh, leading me into 17. 18, uh, the green was really bad, so I just skipped that one. You couldn't really get into uh, this light green here. So I skipped it, went straight towards 19. Uh, the trails were very difficult to see because it was the whole ground was covered in snow. So I, I wanted to follow this trail into the junction and then basically execute like I did, but just ended up following the, the side of the hill because that was just an easier feature to follow uh, than, the, than the trail, which was super wet and muddy because of all the water. Uh, but I managed to find uh, or to get where I wanted to this sort of trail junction area and climbing up this bare rock face was pretty rough so I sort of had to contour around a bit as you can see from this little bend uh, but once I got up there it was really no issues getting getting to the control this white patch right before number 19 was very visible so uh, use that as the main feature I was citing uh, this cliff was also visible all the way from the top of the hill, so uh, it was quite easy once I got up onto the bare rock to make my way to number 19. So 20, uh, I had a, took a rough compass out, uh, mostly was following the white forest here, and was aiming for sort of the top of the hill. I realized I was going straight towards the top, and, uh, and the line was going 
sort of just off the top. So that's why I adjusted here a little bit and made my way down to number 20, no issues. Uh, checkpoint 21 was a little weird. These trails like just did not exist and the green was much worse than uh, mapped. So I sort of just ran up and came up onto this first bare rock thing, crossed this trail onto the second bare rock and uh, found number 21, no problem. Uh, 22 was also weird once again because the trails didn't really exist, but uh, I came around the the dark green on this side, on the south side, just because I was worried that this uh, marsh area would be super wet and super uncrossable. So took the safe option, went south, and no issues there. Uh, so overall, technically not too bad of a course. I think the speed was certainly not there. Uh, partially because of the IT band bothering me uh, at the end here and throughout the course, but also the speed was affected quite a lot by uh, lack of confidence and also just the terrain runnability being quite poor with all the snow and rocks and stuff. Not too bad, not too bad. Felt decent about this considering it was the first course I've done in a long time. And after resting for a few hours, I came back and did another sh slightly shorter course, similar style uh, control pick. Uh, let me zoom in quickly here so we can look through the checkpoints. All right, so this one in general felt quite a bit better than the first one. I felt more confident and thought that my flow through the controls was better, despite the fact that I ran the session earlier and my T-band was bothering me a lot uh, on that first session. My T-band was certainly bothering me, but I sort of just ran through the pain uh, because I was already here and did not want to only do one session and then go back and drive seven hours for a four kilometer course. So went out and did this second session. And yeah, like I said, it, it felt quite a bit better. So first control, I sort of just backed out on this trail because the creek here was quite a bit difficult to cross is quite filled with water so backed out on the trail came around and uh, the rock was really easy to spot from the trail number two i came up and around the hillside and was mainly looking for this bare rock spur sticking out towards the line here as the main feature i'd use to confirm that my bearing was good and I came across that perfectly as expected. And I just, I didn't drop down into number two because this lake was so filled with water from all the melting snow that I just decided I, I knew where it is. I'm just gonna skip this one for now. And yeah, that, that turned out fine. Number three was probably the worst leg on this uh, entire course. For me, I started with a sort of rough compass in that direction. When crossing this power line, I sort of started drifting a bit towards the trail because I was worried of not having any features. Uh, and as you can see, I hit this rock right here, sort of thinking it might be my control. Uh, my distance estimation was a bit off and I really slowed down from there, but I was pretty sure that it was further. I just sort of continued in the same general direction and thankfully saw the rock from sort of far away and ran to it. But there was a lot of hesitation and lack of confidence in this area that was definitely not ideal. I think if I were to redo that checkpoint, I would have definitely kept on my compass uh, much more carefully and sort of just aggressively pushed on my line, knowing that the trail is there behind the checkpoint to catch me uh, if, I, if I need it, so. Found number three. Uh, number four was a fun one. I sort of just took a took a good bearing, as good as I could, and climbed the hill. Uh, was able to see this slight re-entrant that number four was in and use that to my advantage. The spur we're here with all the scattered boulders uh, was also quite readable, so that was nice and felt quite good on that one. Uh, number five was not too bad, sort of just running past the same hilltop we saw earlier and going down the nose to uh, find the boulder that number five was on. Let's see, oh God, this numbering is so confusing. So 
Number six is actually this one here. Sort of took a rough bearing that direction, contoured a bit around the spur, uh, and just got up onto the to the nose of this uh, spur with all the bare rock and found it just fine. Number seven was a bit weird. I didn't have a great direction out of number six, as you can see, but I sort of took, I remember taking the runnable way out of number six in the right general direction. I think I, I still could have been more aggressive on my line here because I just figured that the control was so short. I might, I just should, should, should be more aggressive and get that short, shorter distance to, uh, to the boulder. So yeah, that's a little more extra distance than I would have wanted on that checkpoint. But after that, it got a little better, took a nice bearing out of number seven to number eight. This was pretty easy. It was just a climb up uh, some bare rock and didn't really have any issues. This spur was quite visible. So just came right up onto that spur and saw the boulder from far away and hit it just fine. Number nine, uh, similar control to before, a bit tricky. There's not much to go off of between number eight and nine but I took a slightly better bearing than last time. And I remembered that you could see the spur behind it quite easily. So that's what I was looking out for. And it made the control much better and I felt much more confident. Uh, so it was nice to sort of redo a similar control there and do it much better this time. So I was happy with that. Number 10, this was by far the worst control that I did. Um, the I would not have executed this how I did uh, in hindsight. I should have really went around the bottom and came up this re-entrant here to get into the number 10. But I sort of didn't realize how much these scattered rocks and scattered boulders would affect the runnability of this top section, as well as just some overgrown underbrush that really made it tricky to run across the top of this hillside and to come down into number 10. So. It was really just slow physically. I didn't have any technical issues there because honestly, it, it's not a, that tricky of a control. It's right off the end of this re-entrant here, which is was quite visible from the top. So no issues there. Number 11 came up this re-entrant and then took a bearing, mainly used this hilltop with the yellow on it as a guiding feature and it was quite visible. So really didn't have any issues coming down into the river with the large boulder. Number 12, uh, again, just sort of took a careful bearing. Wanted to make sure I hit it dead on. Uh, so came out fine, followed the bearing, saw the rock. And yeah, didn't really have any issues there. So number 13 uh, ended up doing, I mean, this is similar to a leg I had before, but just backwards just contoured across and was looking out for this spur with all the bare rock, which was quite visible from above. Once again, really easy feature to use and just sort of came down uh, right past that to the boulder that I was looking for. Number 14, uh, again, just sort of took a, took a bearing and used this large bare rock as a guiding feature and once again the bare rock was extremely extremely visible uh, even from far away especially if you're coming from above number 15 came down across the bare rock dropped down and into the stream followed a rough bearing but mostly just used the side of this hill to to follow and then continued in the similar direction uh, into number 15. number 16 uh so you don't remember this one? Oh yeah, I, I, I felt quite good about this leg. Uh, once again, it was downhill, so I just took a slightly more precise compass bearing out of number 15. I think I paused a little bit and took a, took a nice bearing and just ag aggressively pushed down the hill, crossing these two streams uh, until I saw this bare rock uh, right next to number 16 and used that to guide me into the boulder right next to it. So that was solid. Number 17, uh, I mainly used these green features to guide me in. I took a rough bearing out, said, okay, just stay to the right of these two green blotches and I will hit the hilltop with no problem. And that went perfectly. And then number 18, it's the same go control as last time. So I just sort of came around 
similarly to last time around the green and felt quite good about the speed and confidence coming into that one, especially since I've done it before. But yeah, overall, this one felt much better in terms of confidence and overall execution of each leg. Number three was pretty brutal, honestly, in terms of execution, but the rest of the controls felt really good. Even some of the technical ones like number uh, 12, number nine, these were all great uh, boosts in confidence in terms of my orienteering skills uh, for Naok coming up. So I was quite happy with it. I uh, wish, I, wish I could have done more and it sucks to be hindered uh, physically such that I can't do as many orienteering trainings as I want. So I won't be quite as prepared as I wish I was, but then again, I just really hope that I'm able to race and race healthy. So that's the goal and yeah, I'm excited to do it.